Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 55 of the Cloud Computing Australia show which is featured on YouTube and the podcast with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that the next evolution of mobile connectivity is so close with the Australian telco Telstra racing to have its 5G network up and running in 2019, having struck deals with a number of smartphone manufacturers to bring their phones exclusively to its 5G network. Hi Dave, it's great to have you back on the Australia show this week. Yeah, Happy New Year, it's great to be back. Happy New Year, although I'm not entirely sure exactly when this show is going to go out, so uh, it may well be uh, late February or something uh, due to the delay of the, the festive period. But yeah, no, it's, it's great to have you back and, and Happy New Year to you too and, and all our listeners and people that watch the show. So uh, yeah, it's um, 2019, happy times. Uh, so look, we've got a, a great opening question uh, for this week's show then. Is, uh, is this going to provide cloud computing connectivity to all those that have been out of reach previously, Dave? I mean, not just talking Australia here, but I guess globally. Right. Yeah, 5G is everywhere, and certainly it's in the United States. And there's, you know, the United States is huge, just like Australia is huge. And I think they need this technology to get uh, cloud computing and connectivity in general out to the rural areas that don't have it now. It's funny. I was actually speaking to a group in rural Australia one time about cloud computing five years ago, and they asked a good question. They said, well, everything you say sounds great, but I have no internet connection and, and no, high, no high speed internet connection or bandwidth to make this happen. And that's right. And so suddenly this will open up the you know, other two thirds of the country, whether United States or in Australia, that will you know, provide them with the ability to kind of get it high speed bandwidth connectivity to get it infrastructure as a service providers like Amazon and Microsoft and Google and software as a service providers and be able to do accounting online, things like that. And things that have been very difficult, if not impossible to do with, you know, kind of the on-premise software stuff. So this will open up a whole new world to small businesses. It'll create kind of a little minor boom in the economy. And the fact of the matter, it doesn't matter where you live anymore. If you can get access to high speed internet connection, which 5G is able to, to do anywhere you can, and the ability to access a number of resources to, in essence, you know, uh, pr propel your business into the future. And I think that this is going to be a game changer for those areas that really didn't have bandwidth and, and still have, uh, you know, connectivity issues going forward. I've, I saw this firsthand when I, I actually had a house in a rural area and when the bandwidth came in, when they changed from, you know, dial up and satellite to you know, DSL, you know, suddenly a little micro economy boom, people could work from home and people could start businesses and they had access to Quicken and access to FreshBooks and access to all these various SaaS providers that help small businesses. <clears throat> and the ability to kind of take this thing to the next level was at their fingertips. So I really think this is going to be game changing technology and the cloud providers probably don't know it. I, I think the Industry in general doesn't understand it. They just think the bandwidth will mean, um, you know, better connectivity to cell phones so people can do Facebook and, you know, YouTube videos and things like that. But the reality is it's going to be a game changer for the way in which we use the cloud. Yeah, 100% agree. It's very exciting times, actually. It's uh, We're sitting on that cusp of that 2G to 3G to 4G again. But uh, there, there was a report that um, that came out just recently that I read, Ericsson uh, Mobility Report, actually. Uh, and it's estimated that there'll be uh, 1 billion 5G subscriptions, um, which is, I think by 2023 or something like that, which is approximately 20% of all data traffic. So it's really going to grow considerably in the next couple of years, isn't it? It's very, very exciting times. And I think I think, um, like you said, people just want to use it for social media and the mainstream public want to be able to Facebook on it, you know, 4K Netflix streaming, you know, there's nothing like 4K Netflix streaming on the tra train or something. But like you say, it's the heavy lifting in the background, isn't it? That's where the major shift is going to be. Yeah, we have to be able to transfer large data sets, you know, to and from the on-premise systems. We have to be able to provide a reactive network that's able to address security issues, um, the ability to kind of manage bandwidth to the various systems. And a lot of this stuff will go whole building. And so people will use a 5G receiver within a uh, building to, in essence, you know, provide Wi-Fi and band a high bandwidth connectivity to everything in the building. And so people don't understand that that's coming. If you're leveraging satellite today, 
uh, you know, that's not as good as anything. You know, it's probably just above dial up in terms of reliability and your ability to kind of leverage bandwidth. And this becomes kind of per pervasive game changer. And the thing is, if I'm going to start a business and I can be relatively assured that all of my employees are going to have high speed connectivity to the gigabit level, you know, via this wireless network um, where it wasn't didn't exist before, suddenly I have the ability to kind of build and aspect aspects of my business that I didn't, uh, you know, I couldn't do before, and the ability to kind of uh, transfer large areas of data and the ability to kind of uh, move out of the whole bandwidth, um, you know, maneuvering business where people were in essence practice trickery. Uh, to get around the limitations of what they had in the bandwidth with some of these low bandwidth areas. And so this is one of those things where, okay, it's infrastructure, okay, we're going to get a faster network, you know, no big deal. But the reality is, is that once businesses realize the access that they have to various resources they couldn't do, get at before and allows them to punch above their weight, there's going to be a minor boom in the economies in both Australia and U.S. as well as Europe around this technology. And I think it's really exciting. Truly is very exciting indeed. Uh, you, you picked up on a, a good point there is, is bandwidth just gets strangled uh, and you never truly get what you're always promised by the provider. And I think that's incredibly frustrating. Uh, we've experienced that several times on our, on our Skype video calls of just trying to get a, a conversation that doesn't sound like a, you know, some sort of robotic voice or some sort of time delay. So, you know, having the 5G network just get, like you say, it offers us, you know, large data packet transfers of, of all sorts and i think that's so good and it, and, it, and it actually picks up nicely from what we spoke about with ron batra uh, a few weeks ago a few months ago now it must be uh, where we we're talking about edge computing and, and the internet of things and, and interconnected devices and things like that because this really 5g is going to be a huge game changer for this interconnected uh, world that we live in with edge computing and, and iot isn't it yeah, and I, I actually forgot about that aspect to it, but it is going to be a huge connectivity gain. The ability to kind of connect up uh, vehicles and, um, you know, basically everything that we couldn't reach uh, if we're getting into low bandwidth areas and ability to kind of have an inter interaction with things, a responsive interaction with things that, uh, that we couldn't do in the past. And so the ability to provide safety features for motorcycles, safety features for cars, the, the ability to do, um, you know, uh, biometrics, telemetry, the, you know, to communicate with your doctors and monitor your health, um, where you just really couldn't count on the bandwidth uh, anywhere to make those things work effectively. I mean, that's going to change. And so suddenly, if in essence, we have a uh, high bandwidth Wi-Fi connection to everywhere in the world, you know, how does that change the business? Everything can be connected. Everything can communicate one to another whether it's device, a person, a wristwatch, uh, you know, what have you. And I think that the IoT um, boom from that is just going to be explosive. I mean, you're already connecting everything up within the house via the Wi-Fi networks. Well, you know, what if it extends out of the house to everything that occurs, you know, on any kind of a cellular network, in this case, you know, 5G, where the bandwidth is almost, um, you know, the, the, the limiter for these various things coming off. They're spinning off gigabytes of data an hour and you can't you just can't get to networks that are able to handle that and suddenly with 5g you can and then the you know the the mind boggles in terms of the innovative ideas that you can do to take this technology and make you know make hay with it and so i'm excited to see it coming i i do think it's going to be kind of a boom people don't don't see uh, but when it shows up, it's just going to have a huge impact. Australia, I'm glad they're participating because <laughs> geographically, you know, their cities are on the coast, as you know, and everything's very dispersed. And, you know, most of the country is very rural. And the ability to kind of get, you know, infrastructure out to those folks and allow them to kind of take their businesses and take their personal lives to the next level is going to be relatively important to really kind of the growth in the industry. Yeah, I agree. We spoke a few months ago about the fact that connectivity in certain areas, you know, it puts people off from actually living there and, and moving there because uh, they just don't have the access to the Western world. Like you said, you know, it was only recently you spoke to someone in Australia about cloud and, and they would love to be able to use cloud, but they weren't, they just didn't have the, the connectivity or the, or the infrastructure to be able to do it. So it, it's really almost going to uh, be not only a turning point for, you know, um, 
the amount of data we can transfer via 5G network, but it's going to bolster economies in rural villages that that will have an influx of people, you would have thought, because it gives them the flexibility to have a, a lifestyle and still get connectivity, right? It's like a modern day, finding a modern day gold mine. <laughs> yeah, it does. And like I said, people were doing low band, bandwidth trickery to you know get around those things. I remember someone was telling me in India, they actually had a Wi-Fi receiver on a bus. And when they sent an email, it would sit in the queue until the bus came by, would accept their emails into the server, and then would transmit it when it got down the road to a to a bandwidth connector. And it sounds weird, but the thing is, you know, desperate, you know, uh, you know, desperate uh, times, desperate measures. You know, people have just worked like crazy to get around those things. And the reality is, it's a big productivity eliminator, and we're we're looking to we're in the cusp of solving that. You know, everywhere in the world. Can imagine if we can have bandwidth at you know gigabit speed you know pr pretty much mostly anywhere in the world you know via this infrastructure that's really easy to maintain and whether we're going to leverage it on our cell phones or leveraging in our homes or leveraging it within our businesses it really doesn't matter it's going to be fairly pervasive and I, I think that truly is a game changer i think we're heading that way where you know bandwidth is going to be a commodity uh and fairly easy to reach and i think we need to start thinking that way and it's going to be explosion for cloud as well as anything that's internet connected yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like, move some nicely to your top three tips if we uh, if we haven't already covered them in one way or another. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I basically consider bandwidth to be free and pervasive for the future. I mean, I kind of really, if you're going to model cloud computing, the use of cloud computing, uh, bandwidth is going to solve itself eventually. Uh, and so that's going to happen within the next three to five years. And so don't put limitations on yourself based on the fact that you can't get access to bandwidth. I, I do hear this a lot from, you know, my clients that are basically dealing with bandwidth issues for the rural areas or manufacturing capabilities or ability to do logistics, IoT based systems, tracking systems, things like that. Those are going to be solvable in the next few years. Focus on the business opportunity and the new markets. So if you're an investor or you're someone who's investing in technology, so how can you build a business in this space? In other words, if you're going to have this area that's internet connected where they weren't before, they're gonna need people, they're gonna need technology, they're gonna need consultants, they're gonna need um, you know, people to uh, in technology to help them kind of get things to the next level and get connected and get their businesses up and running on the cloud. And then make sure to understand the costs of this stuff. And so one of the things we need to understand if we get into 5G, the carriers are in it for themselves. You know, ultimately they're gonna be greedy in terms of the way in which they charge for the service. And so you have to figure out when the right time is to jump in, you have to figure out what the costs are that you should pay for this service. And I think there's gonna be some initial gouging, make sure you don't get involved in that, just like there was in the initial days of, uh, you know, cellular service in the UK and the Australian and the US. And just use your common sense, use the negotiating skills to make sure that you don't, um, you know, try to overpay for or aren't going to overpay for a service that you shouldn't overpay for great top tips thanks dave and thanks for being part of the australia show 2019 always a pleasure any year <laughs> absolutely and thanks for watching everyone we hope you enjoyed watching this week's show um you can get in touch with dave on twitter which is at david linthicum uh, i'm on twitter at nelson underscore hilliard we really appreciate your support on social media uh, so do feel free to connect with us on twitter linkedin facebook instagram obviously subscribe and like the stuff we're doing on youtube as well it, it means a lot to us to know that we're uh, reaching out to this cloud tech community which is great so we do this um every week and we've got some cool things lined up for 2019 2019 as well so thanks for watching and until next week